Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel on engineering mathematics. In this video, I am going to discuss an example on simplex method. This video is continuation of my previous video, link of which is given in the description box. So let us proceed with an example on simplex method. Here is that example. We are asked to solve this LPP using simplex method. Look at the LPP. Objective function is of the type maximize. This objective function has three decision variables x1, x2 and x3. Subject to these three constraints. RHS of these constraints is all non-negative and these constraints are inequalities of the type less than or equal to. Also given that x1, x2, x3 are all non-negative. So let us proceed with solution. In step 1, we have to convert this given LPP into standard form and we know the first characteristic of standard form is objective function has to be of the type maximize and it is of the maximize type over here so we keep it as it is with little bit changes. I will take all these right side terms to LHS. So objective function now will become z minus 4x1 minus 3x2 minus 6x3 is equal to 0. Subject to the constraint as follows. I wanted to make this constraint equality so I will add s1 here similarly s2 here and s3 here and finally I write x1 x2 x3 and s1 s2 s3 are all greater than or equal to 0. This is standard form of the given LPP. In next step we set up the initial simplex table. This is the standard form of the given LPP and this is how our initial simplex table will look like. In the row of basic variables we mention all the variables involved over here x1 x2 x3 s1 s2 s3 rhs and column of ratio over here we write objective function name and below that we list all the slack variables since there are three slack variables there will be three more rows over here now we fill these boxes with the coefficients involved in this lpp in objective function coefficients are minus 4 minus 3 minus 6 there is no s1 in objective function, no s2 and no s3, so their coefficients are zeros. RHS is of course zero. In first constraint, coefficients are 2, 1, 1. S1 has coefficient 1, there is no s2 and s3, so their coefficients are zero and RHS is 8. Similarly, in second constraint, coefficients are 1, 3, 2. S1 has coefficient 0, s 2s coefficient is 1. There is no S3, so its coefficient is 0, RHS is 12. Similarly, we write coefficients of third constraint in this way. I hope you understood this part. In next step, we have to select the key column. Key column is the column in which the Z coefficient is the smallest negative number. Here, in Z coefficients, smallest negative number is minus 6. So we select this column as key column. In next step, we divide the RHS of constraints with these elements from the key column. So 8 divided by 1 is 8, 12 divided by 2 is 6, 16 divided by 4 is 4. Now we have to select the smallest positive number over here in the column of ratios and we mark that row as key row. The element at the intersection of key row and key column is key element. The variable at the left of key row is outgoing variable and the variable at the top of key column is incoming variable. So we make a note of this by writing simply S3 leaves and X3 enters. So in the next iteration of this table, we replace this S3 by X3. In this way, look at here. Now we will divide this key row with key element. So here 4 by 4 becomes 1. This will become 1 by 4. 2 by 4 is 1 by 2. 0 by 4 is 0. 0 by 4 is 0. This will be 1 by 4. 16 by 4 is 4. Now we will discard these previous ratio values. We will get new ratio values over here in iteration number 1. Next we will make use of this one to bring zeros at this position and this and this. 
For that, I will use transformation R3 minus 2 times R4. Look at here, R3 is 2, R3 means third row of this table. This is R1, this is R2, this is R3, this is R4. Now we have new R4 over here. We will discard this last R4. R3 minus 2 times R4. R3 is 2 minus 2 times 1 is 0. R3 is 1 minus 2 times 1 by 4. So 1 minus one, 2 times 1 by 4 is 1 minus half that is half. 3 minus 2 times 1 by 2 that is 3 minus 1 is 2. Similarly 0 minus 2 times 0 is 0. 1 minus 2 times 0 is 1. 0 minus 2 times 1 by 4 is minus half. 12 minus 2 times 4 is 4. Similarly you can bring 0 here by simply using transformation R2 minus R4. So 1 minus 1 is 0. We will use this same transformation over all these places. So we get these values. You can pause the video and check these calculations. Next I wanted to make this element 0. For that I would like to use transformation R1 plus 6 times R4. So minus 6 plus 6 times 1 is 0. We will use same transformation at all other places. So we see these are the values. Now we see are there any negative numbers in the row of z? Yes, I see there is one negative number here. So we cannot stop here. We have to continue the process. We will choose the smallest negative number among the negative numbers in row of z. There is only one negative number over here. So this is our key column. We will mark it. Using elements of key column, we will write entries in the ratio. We will simply divide these RHS constants by key column elements. So 4 divided by 7 by 4 is 16 by 7. 4 divided by 1 by 2 is 8. 4 divided by 1 by 4 is 16. Now choose the smallest positive number over here, which is 16 by 7. So its row is key row. And the element at the intersection of key row and key column is key element. So we mark it. Next we note down the outgoing variable and incoming variable. The variable at the left of key row is outgoing variable and the variable at the top of key column is incoming variable. So we make a note by writing S1 leaves and X1 enters. In the next iteration of this table, we replace this S1 by X1 in this way. Next, we will divide this key row by key element. So we get 1 over here. Similarly, 1 by 2 divided by 7 by 4 is 2 by 7. 0 by 7 by 4 is 0. 1 by 7 by 4 is 4 by 7. 0 by anything is 0. Minus 1 by 4 upon 7 by 4 is minus 1 by 7. 4 upon 7 by 4 is 16 by 7. Now we will make use of this one and we will bring zeros here, here and here. For that, I will use transformation R2 minus half R1 to bring 0 here. You can pause the video and check this calculation. We will use this same transformation at all other places. So we get these values. Similarly, I will use transformation R3 minus 1 by 4 R1 to bring 0 at this place. So we get 0 here and the remaining values. Now I will use transformation r0 plus 10 by 4 r1. I am considering this is my 0th row, first row, second row, third row. So this is 0th row. So r0 plus 10 by 4 r1 is 0 here. Similarly, other values. Now we see, is there any negative number in the row of z? No, there is no negative number. So we stop this process and we write the solution. Now we see, is there any negative number in the row of z? No, there is no negative number in the row of z. So we stop the process and we write the final solution. Here, solution is x1 is equal to 16 by 7, x3 is equal to 24 by 7 and z is 208 by 7. You can simply substitute these values of x1, x3 and z 
into the objective function of the given LPP. Here I see we have only x1, x3 values. We don't have x2's value. So we will simply substitute values of x1, x3 and z into objective function of the LPP. Solving which you will get x2 is equal to 0 in this case. So solution of this LPP is x1 is 16 by 7, x3 is 24 by 7, x2 is 0 and optimum value of z is 208 upon 7. I hope guys you understood this solution. Now it is your turn to solve some examples. These are some of the examples with their final solutions. Guys, please write me in comment box whether you were able to solve these examples or not. Please also write me how much useful this video is for you. Guys, till I publish my next video, keep watching my videos, keep solving these examples. Thank you all of you. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe my YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get updates about my new videos.